So, quick update. I have picked up a new item. I'm still running the Barrett's Fest. But, I picked up... Sorry, those things bug me. What I consider to be a really decent roll for um, the Nimble holster here. The 1272 both on electronics and on stamina with 1239 rolled on on firearms. And this is the way that I picked it up. The only thing that I did to it was I re-rolled to get skill haste. So I keep my 50% skill haste while being able to run you know, everything that I've been running before to keep my, my bonus going. And I added a seeker mind damage to that. So I still have the four piece tacticians a Barrett's bulletproof vest, and now a nimble holster. And I think this is going to work out, um, yeah, pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'll run down here, run this mission just to kind of demonstrate what this thing is capable of doing. I'll try to find a few spots here and there that will allow me to uh, take cover and showcase what really happens with this set. Agent, I detailed one of my people to link up with you in order to get you into the tunnels and under the wire. Once you're inside, kill the turrets, open the way for the assault. Everything that comes after depends on you. Alright. Hello. So, intercepting radio transmission. Viper 1, copy. Copy by the, uh... Reporting gunfire in the station above us. Viper 2, got the body. Hold tight, by the one will start initial dog. It'll stack all the way up to 30. As you can see what it's doing to my skill power. Caps out about right there. Now, besides the fact that the turret just wrecks, I mean, it's absolutely doing a wonderful job. But using that MG turret is going to let me build the stacks that I need for tacticians. And, uh, yeah. So now I'm going to actually deploy a turret. Alright, now that he's gone, I should do like I was saying. Well, I've got 30 built up on, on the uh, stack here. But 469,000 on my stuff. Uh, they develops a pretty good little pop. Patching into now, GTA transmission. LMB scouts engaging the assault force. We can't move on GCT before those turrets go down. Copy. Hold the line, Sergeant. All right, we're going shut up. So, if you see what it's doing, it's just jacking up the, uh, the skill power big time. When it gets up to the, the 30 points and the 469,000 cap. Then my way that's over here. They're just gonna hide and shoot with her. Transmission. Titan, this is Viper 3. We have hostile contact at the South Munitions Sub. Engaging now. Alright, so that's 23 on it. We had to drop that turret. Now. 
big difference on a lot of things. That MG turret just absolutely chews up the bad guys. But in the process, it's, it's throwing my stacks out, and I'm gonna have to stick my head up. This makes me even more lazy. So, at 50% skill haste, the MG turret that builds my stacks for me. on top of having that high a skill power, it just makes for easy mode. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. principle for, for process for this next section is to go out and place a turret first. Don't want to do that because I've got 30 stack on tacticians. So I'll come up here and do it in reverse order. Turret 3 is running a little hot, but everything looks good. Any word on the tunnel? Seeker. We think it was a gas main. Fire's under control. Okay. What about the secondary assault? We think the blast took them out. Piper squad. Has anyone made it back? Negative. Rise has got to check it out. And I'm playing just like a total freaking noob. Alright, so the old way of doing it was a lot easier. And I changed a little bit too much going on there of what I usually do. Turret 3 is running a little hot, but everything looks good. Any word on the tunnel? We think it was a gas main. What about the secondary assault? Different this time. We think the blast took them out. Piper Squad 2. Has anyone made it back? Negative. Ravi's gone to check it out. Don't be stupid, God damn it. I mean, this is still hard, but changing the way I use it. It's not always an improvement. And this section right here is a little bit different because of the fact that I'm not using the flame turret, I'm using the MG turret. So the turret just kind of shooting until the last minute, and then it's too late. I still have to figure out why these damn seekers are just popping for no reason. The perimeter is down. Don't need any now, of it. link up with the assault force and finish the sweep. Okay, I will do that when it is. Alert. Intercepting radio transmission. At Grand Central, we are under heavy fire. The turrets are down and we're outnumbered. Fire. Requesting support now. Hold tight, soldier. Reinforcements are inbound. It's almost always one that rushes down these stairs.
will actually disrupt on the way. We won't sit, you know, they'll sit there and just freak out. and then we'll cut the stream short. But, um, yeah, with that guy will nimble. It's really going to come out. I'll try it out in last hand. I'm sure I can just also get that. Uh, you have no skill. Press E to win. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? Hate all you want. I don't care. So if I was 12, and had unlimited amounts of dexterity in my fingers to be able to run around and do the magic roll or, you know, I don't know, some superior mathematics skills where I could sit there and micromanage the, oh, well, if I do this, I can do that, and with this bonus, and this bonus, and that bonus, and this, this can Because of the entertainment value. I want to be entertained. I want to have fun. If this is how I'm having fun and it is not hurting anyone, then what's the problem? All JTF personnel be advised. We've got LMB reinforcements headed your way. Take up defensive positions and dig in. Everybody else does, then I do that. So if you want to say that I have no skill and I'm a scrub. Okay. I realize how pathetic it makes you sound when I mean, start calling people names and berating them and belittling them for how they choose to play. Sorry, did I accidentally kill you and, you know, piss you off because you died? Are you mad that you got killed by an old fart that uh, chose to do a skill build instead of uh, firearms or stamina build? I'm going to kind of comment here about the fact that uh, we have so many people speaking foreign languages, Korean, Chinese, whatever, that are Chinese. And the reason for this, and this was explained to me, Way that he did it call it stand. Because, um, if you're on an Australian server or a nation server, um, it could be difficult to get any type of cue for a last stand or any of the DLCs. Alert. Intercepting radio transmission. They can't get games. So they, they cannot get into a match. The match well. is just not working. All LMB at Grand Central. Fall so they end up using a shot up GTF. Grand Central report. Sir, they're pulling back. 
We have it! Ha! Let's see Bliss shrug this one off. Good work, everyone. I'm damn proud of you. Thank you, Shotgun. So, yeah, they're having to VPN and essentially tunnel in to get into our servers and populate the North American server because they can actually get into a last stand or survival or whatever. They just can't find the groups in their own servers because there's not enough population. Okay. But then on top of that, it absolutely pisses off a lot of people whenever you're trying to carry on a conversation and you got some spammer trying to sell a service of you know, they will take your account and they'll run your character through uh, the incursions so that you can get whatever. Um, really? Who the hell is going to pay someone to power them through something on the game? Go away, nobody wants you. Um, but you get that spam and you get all the, the constant other languages in our chat. And it pisses off a lot of people. Well, namely me, because I'm old and crotchety. But how about instead of just make to where they have to flood themselves into our server and flood themselves into our chat servers, keep a regional chat feature. Um, it's pretty simple. Whenever you queue up for the last stand or with you know any of the whatever, you enter into matchmaking whether it's for a mission or for an incursion or for a last hand, underground, whatever. Then you go into a global pool. But we don't need a global chat feature. It's just annoying and nobody really likes it. I've had to put a, probably close to a thousand people on ignore because I don't want to see a foreign language in my chat whenever I'm trying to talk to somebody. It's there's no private channels, there's no additional rooms. Hey, let's go to channel five or let's go to you know the the coffee shop or let's go to wherever. You actually have to go to a different zone. There's you have to you know turn chat off and only use voice. You know, there's so many things you have to do to get around the fact that you can't read your own chat because of all the, the junk that's going on. And as soon as I go back into and this is early during the day we're talking right now whenever I'm recording it's after 10:45 a.m. and it's a, a Wednesday morning you know? so there shouldn't be a whole lot going on but you know you're gonna have people searching for high-value targets you're gonna have people looking for weekly high-value targets uh, incursions um, weeklies whatever you're gonna have the normal chit chat. That's the common thing. But there you go. I'm assuming that's Chinese. Actually, it looks almost Korean. But, you know, when you have 10 or 15 of them talking, it fills the chat and it just causes people to become socially in it. You get stupid posts like this, looking for a wife. You're morally retarded. Do you realize that? It, it turns into Baron's chat. You got people that are just going to spout bullshit and act like a bunch of idiots in chat instead of actually using it and in a good way. Which is why now, whenever I'm recording and streaming, I end up having to turn chat off because A, it's a distraction and it's just an annoyance. And you can't really use it for what you need to use it for. Like this person here is looking for a group for survival. If you want a survival game, you sometimes have to uh, to wait 30 minutes just to get it even on, on this server. And it is, is, is more foreign like language. What I end up having to do is come in here for. and put them on ignore. And it wastes my time having to put them on ignore so that I don't have to see them repeatedly talking. And, and now, I'm being an asshole here, but you know what? They deserve to have a conversation too. But 
Good luck out they there. need to have their own regional server to where when they're talking, they're talking to people who speak and understand their language. See anything you like? Instead of posting a comment there and maybe not getting a response. So I'm not saying that they don't need to be chatting at all, but they do need to um, have their own regional chat. I don't want people speaking any other language but English as a primary in my region. I, I, You're a saint. You know, I can't filter it. There's no way of me filtering out other languages. Yeah, it may sound belligerent or whatever else, but you know what? That's what I want. You know, one of the other things that I want is to be able to stand still. Without having some JTF guy or girl walk over to me and say the same thing fifteen hundred times, if I sit here for for five minutes, last man battalion is going to be mad about crap losing Grand over Central Station and over and over and over. I, I don't need to hear it. If I, I stop here so that I can record, or if I stop here because I want to stream, because. There's illumination. I, I can I can look at my character and actually see something without having to worry about the shadows at there. nighttime. Yes, good luck out there. You'll sit there and say good luck out there infinitely as long as I'm standing right here. So it, it ruins this particular spot. I'll have to walk to find another light, and then next thing you know, somebody else will walk up, and yeah. It's an annoyance. And speaking of annoyance, you start running. Okay, I want to get away from all this crap and get outside where nobody's going to walk up to me. As soon as you walk into this section right here, it automatically slows you down. Why? Why is that necessary? Please, somebody tell me, you know. You know, I, I would love to know what was necessary to make it to where you have to get slowed down there. It's little annoyances. Fix that shit, man come outside. You know, I, I appreciate all the ambience in the game, you know, the shifting shadows like you see going across the screen now. Um, I, I really appreciate that. It makes the game look better and, and feel better. But, you know, fix some other stuff. God bless you. Like whenever you're standing still inside the base, thank you for keeping the me. NPCs that walk up to you and just start having a conversation. Once they come over, say something, have them just walk away. I mean, add that somehow to the the script of how they're they're, they're behaving. I'm just ranting over mindless bullshit now, but want to get onto one other point real quick before I kill the stream and. And that's PVE. Quit ignoring PVE. Um, you keep nerfing everything because of the player versus player environment. And there's a, a pretty you know, decent margin of people, not the majority, maybe, but there's a large percentage of people who just don't care about PvP. If I want PvP, I will go to Last Stand. I think that's great. I like going there. I like doing PvP in that environment. The dark zone, you know, most of the time I won't go to the dark zone because you and a friend or you by yourself, you get out there and you're doing your thing and while you're fighting a group of, of other NPCs, you got another group of players that'll just come over and just rip you up from behind. It makes no sense. How freaking cowardly can you get to attack somebody who is already engaged in combat? How pathetic do you have to be to exploit that situation to go after somebody? Is that the only skill that you have? Is you have to go after people who are trying to defend themselves against a superior number of, of NPCs? Maybe the NPCs aren't that great to begin with, but when there's a number of them, they're shooting at you. You're engaged in combat, and for you to come in and just essentially stab them in the back, 
It's cowardly, really. It's absolutely pathetic. And you know what? You're just worthless shit. It's all you are. You're a worthless shit as a human being. And I, I just can't express how pathetic you are for doing something like that. If you want PvP, something like The Last Stand, it isn't a, a more organized area that is specifically you know that when you go in there the primary focus is player versus player I don't go to the dark zone because I don't want PvP if I go out there it's because it's a much more difficult area there's a lot more dangers and you really need to be in a group instead of trying to run solo and the dark zone to me should be that it should be a cooperative zone where it's a good sized area you can get out there and yes you may encounter other players but you can either assist them or they can assist you it doesn't have to be about player versus player let there be more modes like uh, going into last stand uh, you know survival I uh, could care less about PvP based survival to me that's survival you, know, you should be trying to survive against everything else going on. You shouldn't have to worry about some piece of shit 12-year-old that wants to come and, and shoot you in the back while you're engaged in combat and take all your gear. Chance you take if you're playing PvP? Yeah. I don't like it, so I choose not to do it. Okay, I don't have to. They do have it set up to where you have the option of going PvE or PvP. So that works. That's fine. I'm not complaining about that. But... I'm just saying instead of having the dark zone as a PvP pretty much asshole fest where in some areas you got people that are camping in areas where players spawn or they're they're camping in around safe houses because they know that you know with the new previous patch you have to go up into the new section of the dark zone for a mission and I find that there's people that will camp out right there just trying to catch other players that are trying to get in to complete that mission. Go away. I don't want you. And um, that's just, it's just sad. It's pathetic. Hey, let's go camp out in an area where people have to go and let's prevent them from being able to accomplish a mission. Yeah, it's just sad. But... I would say let's come up with new modes like like the last stand uh, new PvP modes give players a place to actually carry out their PvP you know it's not that difficult to comprehend that by excluding the player versus environment or the PvE community you're you're losing out on a percentage of your player base and you're gonna get more players actually leaving because of that you know, if you don't, um, which this is why I turn off chat, the constant nonsense going on. So we'll just look at this chunk. I'm being particularly old and crotchety fart this morning, aren't I? But what I'd like for anybody watching this, let's come up with some ideas for your new PVE content. You know, I've already had the one video called Factions, and with that, the um, the whole concept was to take existing areas like they did with the Dark Zone to make the the Last Stand areas. Do the same thing with some of the other terrain and, and other features you've already got built around the city. You don't have to add new content; you just have to vary that content a little bit to tailor it for that kind of stuff. When it comes to Patch 1.7. You know, the upcoming uh, patch that's on the public test server. We don't know what the global events are going to look like yet. And it may be, based on what I'm talking about here, we don't know. We haven't had that happen yet. We've had no global event, or I haven't seen one yet. Um, and the idea of having global events only at certain times, not really a fan of that. Um, I'm thinking that um, it should be something that is a constant ongoing thing and I think that the dark zone should be able to encompass that where you go into DZ1 and 
you're going to have lower level uh, mobs to shoot at and less challenging things. But the and this isn't really the case of how it really works out is by the time you progress all the way up to DZ9, uh, there's really not a whole lot different than what you're finding in DZ1. It should be incrementally harder and harder and harder. And by the time you get in DZ9, you had better be in not just a full four-man group, but a well-geared four-man group and have a higher probability of not making it to the end. Make it so where, you know, there's a reward at the end. And if you can make it to DZ10, then you get access to a token or whatever or, you know, something that makes it worthwhile getting to the end. You've got players that will group up in cooperative two and three four-man groups working together without having to create a, a raid team or something like that and try to, to copy World of Warcraft. But make it to where it's a non-PVP environment. It's a PVE only, but a cooperative also zone to where... People can enter it any time that they want, and they can fight from DZ1 to DZ5, and if that's as far as they make it, then there should be some benefits along the way. But by the time you get to DZ10, if you've made it all the way to the end and take out the world boss, some you know exotic team that's just playing like the, um, the end guys at the, um, the end of survival where the NPCs play as much like a, a real player would. They're rolling pretty regular, they're throwing grenades, they're, they're playing in, in a player-like fashion. So, you know, make it to where there are difficult enemies in, at the very end of it, and if all these other teams of, of people getting together, working together as one big force to push forward and take out DZ-10, um, and then once you get there, everybody that's in there at the time, now, once they get there, they're able to get the loot or get the currency or for the kills or whatever else. You know, to kind of keep it to where it is now. Whenever I clear these hostiles and I move two blocks down, well, those hostiles are going to res start respawning. You don't want it to just become empty as you're progressing along. Okay, I made it from DZ1, 2, 3, 4. I'm all the way up to 5 now. Well, DZ1, 2, 3, and 4 are just as hard as they were before. So if you leave and you, you come back and the next day you come back in at your one, you know, DZ1 or whatever, it's always going to be the same battle getting to DZ10. So if you know that there's a group fighting really hard in DZ6, if you want to get DZ6 and assist them, you're going to have to fight your way to get to them so that now you can work together and keep pushing forward. Make it to where these, a non-global event or whatever is worth lots of people banding together, working together for a common cause. Instead of encouraging people to be assholes and preventing them from being able to do anything whatsoever. So, I'm going to end my rant, and I'm going to try to get this uh, live stream up and running as an actual video, so hopefully everything will work out good with that. Um, please make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I can't say it enough times. The more subscribers that I get, the more potential views that I get. The more views that I get, the better my channel gets promoted through YouTube to be able to get more views and more subscribers. And the more people, then the more exposure to the advertisements that pop up on the page. So the way I generate any kind of revenue is by people seeing the, the, the advertisements that have come up there. If you're running an ad blocker, you can't see those, and I don't make any revenue. I don't make any money. And if I don't make any money, then I have to quit doing these videos and quit playing video games and actually do something stupid like get a real job. Um, and we don't want that. You know, I know I don't want that. But I would like to be able to provide quality videos for everybody. And this may not be the best quality video overall, but 
good things are coming soon as long as I can get the support from the community. I've got a Patreon page, I've got a PayPal link, and that's all linked in the video descriptions. And if I can get people to contribute. Now, if you go through Patreon, you can set it up to where you can contribute specific dollar amounts, whether it's $1, 2 3 5 10 20 whatever. You're donating a specific amount each month. And I have minimum goals and, and goals for myself set for that. And we'll start basing content based on that as well soon. But once I reach a certain point with the monthly portion of that coming in, that is a guaranteed monthly income of that, I will be able to stay at home and improve my video skills, improve my video layouts, the equipment, and so forth, and will be able to provide better quality videos with just better content overall. So if you don't want to make a monthly contribution, then I would say go ahead and just do the PayPal link. You can send a one-time bump of cash, and that will help. So, you know, I don't want to turn this into a begathon, but I'm just trying to explain how everything works. And I'll make a separate video based on how things work for that. So, again, subscribe, watch the videos, share them, like them, help me promote them so the channel can grow and get better and better and better content and we'll start branching out to other games as well but for now I like the division so I'm going to make my, my videos based on the division and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that like it as well so I'm going to go ahead and, and stop this try to get this up on, on YouTube so that uh, other people can watch it later and uh, hope you enjoyed it Please don't forget to make some comments as well.